talk about subversive fulfillment. One of the things that we've talked about is that the gospel affirms something in every culture and it confronts something in every culture. And yeah. we, I never heard that term though, subversive fulfillment. So yeah, this shows so, my, so, yeah, well, so I mean, explain the reason, that. Well, yeah, so um, the good, I suppose the good thing for me in some ways is that Tim Keller's picked it up and talks about it a lot in terms of a model for cultural engagement. So the, the actual, the term isn't mine. So there's a there's another famous missiologist who was living in the early 20th century, a guy called Hendrik Kramer. And he was involved in some of the global missionary conferences in Edinburgh in 1910 and then in India. Um, and that was a time when people were starting to say, look, we believe that Jesus is, you know, the ultimate revelation of God. But maybe Hinduism and Buddhism, maybe they're kind of um, maybe Jesus fulfills those other religions. And Hendrik Kramer says, look, I don't like this term fulfillment. Jesus presents something completely different. But if you want to talk about fulfillment, you might call uh, Christ as the subversive fulfillment of um, every uh, culture or every religion. And I think that it's a very helpful way. And again, in the book, that the key passage, I think, if it's if it's worth explaining this just for a minute, Travis, is 1, one, one Corinthians 1, where um, the recognition that the gospel at some level always cause it is an offense. What, what we think is wise, God thinks is foolish and vice versa. So there's always a confrontational um, Jesus, you know, the cross of Christ, Christ crucified is, is a big fat no to the world's ways of doing things. And I think that that's really in, in, important. There's always a, a line of pain we have to cross when we're calling people to repentance and faith. But in that passage in one Corinthians one, Paul still talks about two different ethnic groups, Jews and Greeks. Both of those groups have their own hopes, dreams, desires. Um, Jews look for power. Greeks look for wisdom. Now, it could be that Paul could have just said, we preach Christ crucified. And I don't care what anyone else thinks. Who cares what Jews think? Who cares that we listen to the culture? Who cares what Greeks think? But Paul makes the connection. So in that passage, Christ crucified is a stumbling block to Jews and Greeks, but to those who have been saved, to both Jews and Greeks, here's how he finishes it, isn't it? Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Now we think, wow, this is a kind, is this a felt needs gospel? You mean Jews are looking for power and Christ is power? Uh, Greeks are looking for wisdom and Christ is wisdom? Yes, in precisely the opposite subversive way that they thought power and wisdom would be displayed a crucified messiah is not powerful a crucified messiah is not wise and yet paul still makes the connection so again going back to that passage in Acts 17 paul wanders around the objects of worship so subversive fulfillment is saying there will always be a confrontational aspect as we ask people or proclaim to people to turn from idols to the living god 1 thessalonians but there's always a connection point where we have to engage the culture, listen to the culture, understand its hopes, dreams, fears, um, and engage at that level. And I think 1 Corinthians 1 and Acts 17 give a great model. Um, and again, the book, the little book I did previously to Making Faith Magnetic called Plugged In talks about that kind of framework a little bit more about the importance of that. So that, that's what subversive fulfillment is. It's saying that the gospel connects with culture or religion uh, in a way that both confronts and connects at the same time. And you will know, and this is generalized, but it's true of American evangelicalism and the same as UK evangelicalism. Some groups are great at the confrontation and not very good at the connection. Some groups are great at the connection, but they're not very good at the confrontation. And that's where that model that I think we see modeled throughout scripture um, in terms of um, subversion and fulfillment is that model that i'm i'm kind of um trying to explore uh in that phrase subversive fulfillment 